This time on Open Framework Super Basics, we're doing something just because you asked for it. Loretta left some comments on the 3D box cloud example and said, how can we turn this into eyes? And Loretta, this one's for you, because this is how we can build our own super creepy, mildly disturbing 3D eyeball box clouds generatively with Open Frameworks in Open Framework Super Basics. Did I say that they're a little... Creepy. Welcome back. Another episode of Open Framework Super Basics. And in a previous episode, we looked at doing generative 3D box clouds, introducing 3D, uh, and built something that looks a little bit like this. So we used a bunch of code to generate an individual box as a 3D object and then make a, a vector of them and make them appear in space. And we used the EasyCam Open Frameworks object to look at it and then had them spin about. And somebody sent me a comment in the comments, which you can comment on this video, saying, this is really nice. How could I turn this into eyeballs? And it's a relatively straightforward kind of thing. And I thought about this and thought, well, yeah, okay, let's, let's give it a go. So this video is about turning this into eyeballs. So we're going to riff off some previous code and build on it and run through kind of quick and show you how you can use texture mapping and uh, you can use different kinds of primitives and take hopefully bits of inspiration like this and turn it into your own work. So we have a existing box cloud where we're generating individual 3D primitive boxes, making them appear in space and randomizing where they appear, putting them into a vector to make hundreds and hundreds of them, and then just saying randomly each time, just change the position of one. So we have this slowly changing box cloud. And we added in controls, if I use the up key and the down key, to change the random variable of where they'll appear in space. So they appear at zero, 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 this three-dimensional center point, plus or minus a random amount. And we can increase and decrease that random amount. So as you can see, as they're regenerating, the cloud gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're spaced out. Or if I decrease this, as the boxes are changed and they appear at a new position, that new position is closer and closer and closer, so we get a much denser cloud. And I put a light in using the OF light object, gave it a position, and it illuminates our scene. If I quit that now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, the boxes and turn them into spheres and then I'm gonna wrap them in a texture. And I had a mooch about and I found from uh, rockthe3d.com, I'll put the link down below, uh, a free high resolution photorealistic human eye textures, which were slightly creepy. And they looked a little bit like this. And loads of different colors and different shapes. And I chose this one, it's free to download and you can go and download it as well. And because we're gonna make a sphere, and because of how the texture wraps around the sphere, I actually need to change the shape from it being square to being rectangular. So it needs to be double the width that it is high. So I used um, Affinity Photo Designer and I just stretched out the canvas and filled in the sides. It's a little bit crude, but you see exactly what's going on, hopefully. So what happens is the vertical height will wrap around the sphere from the front uh, top to the front bottom, and then the sides will wrap all the way around to the back. <coughs> so I've got my texture that I'm going to wrap around a sphere, and I've put it into the data folder inside the binary folder. So when our application builds, it'll be put inside the binary folder, and as a default, this is where Open Frameworks goes and looks for resources we want to load, like images or sounds. So without further ado, let's hack the code and take a 3D box cloud demo and turn it into a cloud of slightly creepy eyeballs. In my header file, in the main header file, 
all I'm doing is I'm making a new vector. I have a vector of OF box primitives, and I'm going to make a vector of OF sphere primitives called spheres. And then I'm going to make an OF image object called I. And I'm going to load the texture into this and then tell Open Frameworks to wrap the texture around each of these sphere objects. So in my CPP file, you can find the link for Rock the 3D right here. I'm going to make a new variable. Instead of having max boxes, where it really easily helps me make a loop through to build all the boxes I want, I'm going to make an integer called max spheres. I'm going to start off with, let's try 200 and see. Everything else stays the same. A variable space range, which is this, where is this going to appear in space that we can increase and decrease randomly for the position. We set enable depth tests depth test to be on so that Open Frameworks will check what spatial order in the Z direction, this front and back, should things appear in. Otherwise, it'll draw them in the order they appear in the code. Set the background to be black. Set our drawing color to be white. We take our light that we've made, we set the position, and we switch the light on. We made an OF image called I, and I'm going to use I.load and then the name of our texture file in here, in this case, human eye texture 003, which is the one that I've altered to be double width and height. And we've got a loop here that goes through from naught to max boxes, this integer that we just set, and loads a new OF box primitive, sets its size and sets its position, and then pushes it onto the back of our list or our vector of new boxes. Now, I basically copied that, and I'm going to comment it out, and I've made a modified version here that does exactly the same, but instead it goes to our max spheres integer. And I make an OF sphere primitive called new sphere. I set the size. Previously, with the boxes, we made every single one the same size, which I kind of liked, but you could make them random sizes if you want. And with the eyes, I think we'll make some little ones and some big ones, and then they'll just get creepier, because um, that's properly odd. Uh, and we're going to set the size to randomize between 20 and 150 in diameter. Then I'm going to say new sphere, map texture coordinates from texture, which says go to the texture that's inside the OF image object, this I that we've loaded in, and map the coordinates of that image onto the sphere object. And then I say new sphere, this sphere that we've just made, set its position exactly the same way that we did with the box. So we set the X and the Y and the Z position. And I say the X position is going to be between whatever his space range, this amount of difference from the middle. So it, we start off with 1,000, so it'll be from minus 1,000 to plus 1,000 in the X and in the Y and in the Z position. And then we just use spheres pushback. So we take the new sphere object that we've made and stick it on the end of our list or our vector of spheres. So far, so good. We've made a whole vector full of these spheres of random positions and random size. And then an update, all I was doing before was every update, randomly, I'd choose one box in my list of boxes and change its position. So they appear and disappear slowly. And I'm going to comment that out. And instead of saying boxes, set the random position, I'm going to say spheres. And I use spheres dot size. So it looks at our vector and says, how big is this vector? Make me a random number between zero and the size of the vector. So it'll pick a random sphere in our big vector of spheres. And then it says, set the position to be a random X, random Y, make that a bit bigger, and random Z. So it takes one of the spheres in our 500 or 200 spheres, moves it to a new random position. And then what I found was all the eyes will probably end up pointing the same way because we're making them 
We're just changing their position. And what I'd like to do is change the orientation. So I think we'll make it without, and then we'll go and have a look. And then in the draw, I'm going to tell the camera to begin, and then I use this thing, the eye, and I get the texture of the image that's in the OF image object called eye, and I tell it to bind, which means that every 3D object that I draw in the program after this is going to have this image that I've bound wrapped to it. And then I go through, and I was previously looping through every box in my boxes array, but I'm going to comment that out. And I'm going to say, go and get the size of the spheres array and bind the texture and draw the sphere, then unbind the texture. So it's going to bind the texture to every sphere in the direction that it's looking. And then in my key press routine, I've got what we put in in a previous episode about how to hack our templates. This is a default key command I put in all of the templates now when I build a new Open Frameworks project. And I've used this variable space range on the up key and the down key to increase it or decrease it, which is the random amount of where the new boxes will appear every time they're updated in space. So if I compile this now, let's have a look what we've got when we swap the boxes for spheres. Okay, so run this full screen. And I can see it's doing this auto-rotate, which we're taking from time. So we're making this variable time and just saying auto-rotate a tiny bit based upon the milliseconds counting up. So we spin the whole thing, which kind of looks cool. And I can use the 3D Easy Cam to look around. And I can see there's my 200 eyes all staring at me. And if I increase the space range, I'll get a much bigger cloud. And if I hit the down key, you can see as they're updating, they're all updating, clustering much more in the center. And then I get this dense kind of properly odd clump of eyeballs. So that's kind of working well. And they're appearing at all different sizes, which I like. What I'd like to do is do this thing where I change the orientation of the objects every time I update. So I'm going to go into my update routine and I'm going to make a vector three object. So it's just a variable, but it's got an X and a Y and a Z in it, which we've seen before where we used an OF point, which is an X and a Y. So it has three values in a vector three. And I'm going to set the Y orientation, which is our new vector three variable I've just made called I orientation. And I want it to be random 360, random 360, random 360. So it'll make these three values, X and Y and Z, and put it into this vector object called I orientation. And then I am going to randomly go through the spheres vector, choose one sphere, and reset the orientation using the command set orientation to this vector three variable I've just made. So after I've moved the position of one of the, the eyes randomly to a new space, I'm going to pick another eye and set its orientation. So it's rotation in the X and the Y and the Z, the Z to look in a new direction. And hopefully it'll be even creepier, them all appearing at different sizes, moving around. And let's run that and see what we get. It's just creepy. Uh, so we're building our 200 spheres. They're appearing at a random position based upon this variable uh, space range. And every update cycle, one of them's being moved. So we're moving 60 a, sec uh, 60 a second each frame. And also 60 times a second, we're changing the orientation of one of them to look in a different direction. So we have this big, floaty, creepy crowd. And if I hit the down key, I think I can make this look weirder. 
And so I'm reducing the space range variable. So every time one's updated, it'll be closer to the other. So you get a, a, a clumpy cluster of creepy eyeballs. And using the OF easy cam object, I can move around with my mouse or my pointer really easily. And that is just slightly unpleasant or, or you know you may look at this and go that is just beautiful um, and you know you could actually uh, load in four or five or ten or fifty or as many as you like of different eye textures and randomly choose one to bind to the object so you could get lots of different kinds of eyes or use cat's eyes or different shapes or different textures anything you fancy and if I zoom out a little bit we have this uh, slightly disturbing lump and if I use the up key to increase space range we'll have a broader cloud of these eyes floating around so we're making spheres instead of boxes we're still putting them at random positions but we're changing the size each time we make them and we're also changing the orientation and we're using OF textures from an OF image that we've loaded to wrap around by using bind texture. So there it is. And I want to say thank you very much to Loretta who left me a comment on the previous box cloud video saying, could we do this with eyes? So Loretta, this one is for you. And also for some of the other people that have been asking about doing more 3D stuff. This is how one of the ways so you can build your own slightly disturbing, slightly creepy, but also slightly beautiful 3D eyeball cloud. So leave comments. Let me know what you're up to. Leave me requests. The feedback is fantastic and just keeps me going and, and really excited about doing this. Please hit the subscribe. Um, hit the like for the video. Leave me comments. And I'll see you on a future video of Open Frameworks Super Basics.